All right, Thursday morning, who's with me? Elizabeth McDonald. Ashley Webster is back. Well done. Hey, Good to you. see you. Good. Market watchers, Eddie Gabor and Scott Martin, both with us as well. Eddie, I'll start with you. I went through the litany of potential negatives. The Fed raises interest rates, the G7 mess, the NOCO summit, and yet the market is up. What's happened? We are in a secular bull market, and it is here to stay for the foreseeable future. I mean, the bottom line is, if you look at the underlying fundamentals, this market has been very resilient. I think the interest rate fears are overhyped. Look at where we are. A 2.9, 3% 10-year Treasury historically should not compete with the equity markets. Now, inflation and interest rates, I believe, are the biggest uh, thing that could cause markets to stop. But we have to get the four plus percent, in my opinion, on the 10 year before it starts to compete with the equity market. And that's a long way away. So it is a long way away. It's a bull market. You're holding our viewers' hands. If you want to put in some money into stocks, that's OK. It is. And look at the labor market, too. I mean, the labor market is an area where we're going to start to see wage growth and consumers are going to continue to spend. And that's very, very positive for our markets and our economy. All right. We'll take it. You, Scott Martin, want to hear from you. Uh, we had a report this morning that retail sales went up uh, very strong. 0.8% doesn't sound strong, but that is very strong. Is that what's making this market go up today? I believe it is, Stuart. I mean, that's good from a historical, historical perspective, as we talked about with the trouble retail's had in the last, you know, several quarters. So that's good to see. Um, I kind of agree with Eddie. I will caution you guys. I don't want to spike the party punch here, but it's starting to feel a little bit January-esque here. You know, things are really good. The Fed is so dovish. The international picture is coming together with Trump and all this friendliness that's going on around the world. I, I just think, you know, as an individual investor, just be a little careful here. I'm not selling our positions. You know, we love the tech stewards, as we talked about for many, many years here. But the reality to me is adding some things like gold, like GLD, which we have for our clients, adding things like AMLP, which are dividend-focused oil and production pipeline plays. Those are ways to kind of hedge out what I believe is a little bit of an overvalued market here. Okay. Thanks very much, Scott. By the way, we just put Amazon on the screen there for you. I believe that's an all-time high. Is that correct? Well over $1,700 a share. There you go. Amazon, $1,760, $1,717 per share. Amazon, new high. Let's get to Apple. As we told you, it says it's looking to close that software loophole that allows cops to crack into a suspect's iPhone without their permission. Apple says that they're not trying to frustrate law enforcement. First to you, Scott. I don't think that makes any difference whatsoever to the stock. It's just maybe bad PR. That's it. Yeah, it's bad PR. And I mean, these days, gosh, it's almost like par for the course, you know, given that the U.S. Open is starting today, that the tech companies <laughs> out there are just all about bad PR, aren't they? Uh, you know, so that's what's interesting is just that, you know, it's not a great choice. It's not the choice I would make if I was running Apple, but I'm certainly not. It's not going to affect the stock, though. I mean, we've seen Apple have a great rally in the last few months. Investors, buyers are coming in. So to me, this is still a own, regardless of the uh, questionable okay. social choices they make. I got you. McDonald's, they're taking a shot at Starbucks. They're coming out with a rival cold brew, frozen drinks. Now, Eddie, I know you're not a fan of Starbucks. We've talked about this before. Yes. But are you a fan of McDonald's now? I am. I think McDonald's is in a good position. I I think they're going to get market share from Starbucks because I think Starbucks has a lot of challenges ahead of themselves. And the other thing, too, is McDonald's has a much better price point. And I think at the end of the day, they're going to penetrate that market and Starbucks is going to continue to have challenges on their. Yeah, growth. these yeah. cold brew things. Two dollars. Yeah. Two or three dollars. Two dollars. They're putting it on the dollar or two dollar or three dollar menu. So that's a real shot at Starbucks. And you know what else McDonald's is finding? That people don't care about the price when they buy their coffee in the morning. They're probably bleary eyed going into work. But by that's afternoon good. time, they're like, oh, how much is this coffee? And they're trying to pull those customers away from Starbucks right. Nitro Brew, which is like $10 or whatever it, it is. It makes sense. It's I mean, also about speed. Getting in, getting your coffee, yeah. and getting the heck yes. out. Yes. You know, Starbucks relies key. on retail traffic, too. And retail, as we know, has been hurting. So if they don't get foot traffic from retail, yeah. that's going to hurt their brand Dude. and their business, too. I want my fast food fast. Yes. And cheap. Thank you very much, indeed. <laughs> that says well, it all, Steve. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Check the big board. It's a triple-digit gain right from the get-go on a Thursday morning. Okay, 100 points higher, 25,300. We'll take it. Weaker sales at the parent company of Men's Warehouse and Joseph A. Bank. That company, the parent, is Tailored Brands. Look at it go down. 
18% down. Lower profit, lower sales at arts and crafts retailer Michael's stores. Don't do that. Down 17%. Wow, that's a big move. Sprint is going to end its $15 per month unlimited promotion this week, citing high demand. <laughs> Too many people took it. <laughs> like, Oops. Can't afford that. <laughs> Volkswagen, as in VW, fined $1.1 billion in the emissions cheating scandal, one of the highest and heaviest fines ever levied on a German company. VW says it would not appeal that penalty. Stock goes up. Back to Tesla. The chief, Elon Musk, raises his stake in the company. That's what I want to talk about here. Mm. They've raised their stake. I, I know they've got the boring company, which is going to tunnel under Chicago. But to now he owns, everywhere I, I got it. He I, now owns about a fifth of Tesla. Exactly. Yeah. He's got 19% of Tesla, right. and the stock has gone from 280 three weeks ago to 348 as of today. Scott Martin, I don't know whether you like Tesla or not, but it's going places, ain't it? Yeah, it's driving away from us. I'll tell you, I, I'm scared of Tesla. I'll put it that way. And I got to take this one on the chin. You know, we owned Tesla for a little while uh, back in 2017, made a little bit of money, not enough to even really talk about. So I'll be quiet. But here's the thing. I mean, Musk is doubling down or tripling down. I think this is third buy this year of the stock, or at least in the last year. And they're, they're starting to the weird things, though. I mean, they, they've leveled off kind of the hierarchy and the management. They, there was a report out recently about them uh, firing about 30 workers in one of the factories. So to me, it's just still one of those companies that is hard to figure out as to whether they're going to get those production lines fired up, which is what is really needed to be done, because the fact that the cars are so good, demand is off the charts, they just can't keep up with it. Would you buy Tesla at 348? I would not. They're still burning through a lot of cash. And I think in the late cycle of this type of market, you need to look at debt ratios of companies so that way when things get tight, they can cover. And I think right now, if something bad happened economically, they would be in a jam because of how they're burning through cash. And you don't own it at this point? I right? do not. You know, I said I was thinking about buying it three weeks ago. Change when it was your at mind? Because it's getting more expensive to borrow money now. Rates are going up. So yeah. it's getting even But I didn't more buy it. And now it's at 348. And I Kind of expensive a for a guy like roof me. Alone. <laughs> guy like me. Why? Do, look, you, you and I answered this question. Why doesn't Amazon or Tesla split? Why not? They used to. Yeah. A, a stock goes to $100 a share. A few years ago, you split that thing. Okay. Now you don't. Why not? Yeah, I don't know why they're not doing that anymore. Maybe it sounds, maybe it's more attractive if it's harder to get at a higher price. What do you uh, think about that? Huh? No, <laughs> I'm not buying it, Eddie. I'm not buying it. Convoluted logic, yeah. son. That's the way that is. Microsoft, it is taking aim at Amazon. It's got its own technology to eliminate cashiers and checkout lines. Mm. This, to me, is an example of the future. Again, like your fast food. Do you want to quick and now yeah. with the least amount of fuss get in get out but and as then... lizzie said earlier <laughs> when you th there's no checkout line and there's no cashier mm -hmm. you just take it off the shelf and put it in the carton in the cart you, have to you spend buy more. a lot more <laughs> right that's right because you and don't then, look at... and then microsoft puts that all up in the cloud and and so does amazon i would imagine and everybody mm. else they track what you buy yeah and look at what microsoft you, what look you're at looking that. at the yes. longest on the shelves. do you right? like microsoft that's... Of course I did. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the more competition sure. Amazon has, the better it is for the marketplace, yes. right? It's, it's healthy for have good competition. And if they team up with Walmart like yeah. they've talked about, yeah. that's enough to get Amazon's attention. Okay, come on. Last word to you, Scott. Do you like Amazon? Uh, no, uh, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I like Amazon, yes, Stuart, and those people who own Microsoft are some of the smartest people no. in the world. I believe there's a few of them here. <laughs> okay, you're back on the including show tomorrow us, morning. Including okay. us, myself included. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's that time, 9.40. Thanks very much indeed, Eddie Gabor and Scott Martin. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed.